Hi guys, I just thought I'd make a short video today talking a little bit about methylation and explaining a little bit about what it is and what it means. Now, methylation is a bit of a buzzword in health and wellness these days. A lot of people talk about it, a lot of people want to know what it is, and I found it quite amusing because I was talking to a practitioner the other day and she describes methylation as the new gluten because everyone's interested in it and it is a bit of a hot topic. Now, by calling it the new gluten, I'm not trying to make a mockery of it at all. I, uh, for one, think methylation is of tremendous importance. So that's why I'm filming this video today. I just wanted to explain a little bit about what it is and what it means. So first things first, I want to clear up something. When people think of methylation, often they think about the gene MTHFR and they link the two together. Now MTHFR is a gene involved in folic metabolism. So it's very important for methylation, but methylation is not about MTHFR. MTHFR is one gene involved in the process of methylation. In fact, if you wanted to make a statement saying what methylation is about, I would say methylation is about SAM-E, or SAM. That stands for s adenosyl methionine. And what that is, is it's the body's main methyl donor. It helps tack a methyl group, onto a substrate. If you don't know what that means, that's okay, but basically methylation, what it is, is it's the moving of methyl groups around the body, moving it from here to there. And that does a hell of a lot of work for us, such as building DNA bases, metabolizing and synthesizing hormones and neurotransmitters, and amongst other things. Anyway, the reason MTHFR is such a hot topic is its role in creating SAM. And that's what I explained just now. So I want to explain this process to you in a very simplistic way. So on the board I'm showing you, we have three pathways. We have the folate cycle, we have the methionine cycle, and we have the transsulfuration cycle. Now, if you don't if you're not familiar with these words and these terms, you don't need to understand it all right now, that's okay. And I haven't actually filled everything out on the board yet. So you're not going to understand what everything is and where everything means. That's fine. But what I want you to do is just pay attention to the arrows. So the folate pathway goes around this way, and the methionine cycle goes around that way. So the first thing I want to introduce you to is the concept of converting homocysteine back into methionine. Homocysteine is a marker we have down here. I'm going to write HCY on the board. And you may well have heard of homocysteine before as being a big risk factor in heart disease, which it is, but we do need it at the same time. Now, the reason MTHFR is important is because MTHFR down here is involved in converting folate into its active form methylfolate. And if you watch what the arrows do and where they intersect, methylfolate has a profound role in turning homocysteine back into methionine. And that largely also uh, revolves around the complex interplay between folate and B12. And the enzymes involved in that are MTR, and MTRR. So that's, that's a lot I've explained about just then. And like I said, you don't need to remember all of that. You can watch, you can play this video back or go to other reliable resources, that's absolutely fine. But the reason I explain this to you is because I wanted to explain the relevance. And the relevance is that methionine, which we get from converting homocysteine back into methionine, comes down this way and creates SAMI. Remember what I explained about just now. SAMI is, our, is the body's main methyl donor. So this is what it's all about, creating SAMI. So SAMI can go off and do its magic, helping the body methylate. Right, so the next step is keeping the cycle spinning. So SAM converts its way back into homocysteine. Now the problem is, a lot of people associate homocysteine with being bad, being a risk factor for cardiovascular disease, which it can be, but we don't want low homocysteine either.
because we need to keep this cycle spinning. If we have low homocysteine, the cycle won't be able to spin and we won't be able to create sufficient sand. So we, what we want to do is instead of reducing homocysteine is just make sure it keeps recycling and that's why we need to keep this cycle spinning. Now there are three ways that we can convert homocysteine or move it, or so to speak. We've got this way via methylfolate, MTHFR, and the MTR and MTRR enzymes. We've also got this pathway, which relies on the BHMT enzyme. And the one which I haven't got to yet is the one which takes us into the transsulfuration pathway. This is the CVS enzyme. So we're not really talking about methylation anymore, we're talking about transsulfuration. But the reason this is so important is, amongst other things, this converts homocysteine downstream into the body's most important antioxidant, glutathione. So there you have it. That's what I'm going to leave you with today. Methylation is very important for a number of reasons, but the two biggest things I want you to take away from this video is the production of SAM and the production of glutathione. Thanks for watching.